part two of the tools video. Um, I start things off, we're going to talk about the tool that we didn't talk about uh, in the last video, and that's the vise. Um, like I said, this is a Montana mongoose, a Griffin Montana mongoose, and um, I really, really, really like this vise. Um, like I said, I haven't had any problems with it, I haven't had any issues or anything like that. If you adjust it right, set everything up right, it's super, super smooth. Um, it'll stay there, it'll stay there, it'll stay there, it'll stay there. You know, it's just really just everything really quick to adjust the tension. You see there, I'm trying to move the, the handle and it moves the whole vise if I tighten everything down. If I loosen everything back up, super quick, super easy, um, you know easy to do. Um, let's talk about putting the hook in the vise. Um, what you see a lot of people do is they'll just hook it up and that'll be right where they hold it. Um, with these bigger hooks, putting them down a little bit further isn't going to do anything but save the ends of your jaws. Alright, so tighten it down easy peasy. Um, the way that you just, at least, you know, this vice, every vice has some way to adjust this, but what you do on the mongoose is this little wheel right here. This adjusts, see if you can see that, uh, this thing on it, you can't really, but see it adjusts the, the size of that, beginning size, and then this lever here clamps. So what I do is take the hook, adjust it so it'll easily fit in there and still come out, put it where I want it, and then clamp it down. And a good way to make sure that your hook is tight is, see how it vibrates? If it was loose, see it's kind of a little bit lower pitch. Or if it's really, really loose, pull that out a little bit. It'll be a little bit tighter than that. You, know, you go to flick it, and it just winds up going down. So remember, high pitch. Just like that. And you know, people complain that you know, well, putting it that far in the jaws doesn't give me access back here. Well. Really, you should be stopping your tying right at the hook barb. Where's the hook barb? Right in front of those jaws. Um, if you're tying past your chance starts a tag, and you really don't need that much room, anyways. So, um, putting it back here, it saves the tips of your jaws for these little guys. The way you do these is little size 24. Uh, scud hook, the light wire scud hook, and same exact way, but I'm going to put them right in the tip. So see that? And you can even do it with the small guys. See that? And, you know, this is why I really like this, because, you know, I've tied with, let's see, I'll just go ahead and grab a few. Big pike hooks all the way down to you know 24s, 28s. Um, I've yet to get my hands on some 32s, but um, with this vice, anyways, um, yeah, they'll they'll do it all. Um, as you can see, I got some material hooks here, and this is kind of the standard one that comes with. This is an extra one that I stole off of another vice, but. Um, yeah, these are handy. Just pull back your materials, stick them in, and they just look like springs. It took me a while to figure out what they were when I first started, but um, yeah. Say you're tying a fly and you've got you know all this crystal flash bouncing around, and you know you want to use the rotary function, but it keeps binding up back here. All you do you just pull it back and stick it in there. The nice part about having two is that you know if I have a bunch of one material and a bunch of another, I can 
put them in here and then I can put the next one down in here and they stay separate but they're both captured so it's a great way to do that um, another thing is let's see if I can show it on video here is I got my little hackle gauge down here but I've also got a magnet this is a magnet out of you know a, um, I think Umpqua does this but uh, it's you know Tamco hooks but distributed by Umpqua um, these old magnets that come in the hook packs and just pulled it out and stuck it on top of there and it's great for holding all these hooks extra hooks um, you know if I've got a fly that I tied and you know say I want to keep it as an example so I know what you know the next one should look like I can just stick it right on there and it's not going to get lost in all the filth and dust and everything so really handy to have that little magnet right there and that just you know slides up and down on the stem of this vise all right so now we're going to get into the other tools so I've got you know, stick this hook back in the vise same way as before centered up for you guys so first thing that you do when you start tying is well first thing I'm going to do is tighten my vice up a little bit first thing that you do is get your thread started and see it's got very little tension you know this is enough tension to keep it from you know creeping downwards as it as it hangs there but um, First thing you do is start your thread, and then now you know if this is first time ever using this thread, or you know first time tying flies for some of you. What I want you to do is grab your bobbin, hold on to it as hard as you can, and see how much force I can put on that without it breaking. Versus you know you can do a little bit more and look for I don't I doubt you guys are gonna be able to see this but you know with this uni thread um, UTC and Danville especially you'll see you know little fibers pop and that means that you're you know you're maxing out the thread so you know feel that look for that but um you know say you don't see that if you break the thread no big deal now you know that that is the most pressure that you can put on the thread at all and um, like I said last time, this you know it'll pop out of your uh, bobbin holder there, but um, don't worry. You can just ends got frayed a little bit, so all you do is trim that frayed end off and stick it back in that hole, pull it through, and ready to go again. We'll pull all that. So all we're doing is putting some thread on there. And um, I know some of you are probably wondering, why do you want to be able to adjust the tension on when you're tying a fly? It seems like you know all the time you'd want it tight. Well, right now I'm just laying down a uh, um, base of thread, so I don't need a whole lot of tension. All I'm looking for is just you know thread on the hook. That's all I need. You want enough so that it's not you know flopping around everywhere but you you want enough that you can get your wraps in and you're never see if I have too much see I'm getting in closer and closer if I have too little getting bigger and bigger and bigger and also it, it goes to you know where what kind of materials you're tying in here we've got um, we'll do some hair again use this stuff. So, got my hair scissors. And just because this is demonstration, you know, we're not going to, well, you know, we're learning how to use tools. Let's go ahead and stack it. So, first thing I do is I got my pump of hair here. I take my brush or um, this Velcro even works good for this. Just pull it through and get all this under fur out. Flick at it too, that'll get some of it out. And then I'm going to 
our hair stacker. Then tips in. Then just kind of tap it on your desk a few times. And I, I personally, I like to cover my finger up like this, or cover up the, the hole with my finger. Because if you don't, sometimes the, the fibers can start coming out a little bit and mix everything up. So if you keep it over, it'll stay inside. Tap it a few times, and then you can just pull that out. And because of that little gap that I was talking about in the last video, the tips are sticking out. I don't have to go you know, fishing for them in there. So all we do is grab those with our fingers, being careful to keep all those tips lined. And then pick out where we want it. Um, like I said, this is just a demonstration fly. I'm not going to go for any kind of pattern or anything like that. So keeping those tips aligned. We'll go right there. We'll kind of make like a little stimulator tail. Big bushy stimulator tail. So see, I'm taking wraps down. But in order to keep this tail from flaring out too much what I want to do is once I get to the end take a few loose wraps that will kind of collect everything you know because if I go too tight what's going to happen is here, I'll, I'll do one so these are with the loose wraps if I do tight wraps see how it wants to flare everything out because those um, hairs are all open fibers or hollow fibers I should say so when you do a tight wrap, it compresses everything and makes everything flare out. So the beauty of being able to um, adjust tension on the fly is that I can do those loose wraps and I can do tight wraps. And, um, you know, like I said, I've, I haven't played around with, uh, I believe it's the right bobbin, the one with the um, adjustable drag on it, but um, I don't believe that you can really get really tight with it um, I'm sure because the, the spool is exposed on it so I'm sure that there is some way that you can but um, I just I like the old style and um, it, it works really really well for what I ask it to do and um, yeah being able to adjust tension again so um, so we'll take collecting wraps around here just kind of gather everything up and then we'll go back. You can take tight wraps. Level everything down. Alright, and then come in here with our hair scissors. Because remember, hair, hair can be a little bit abrasive to uh, for good razor scissors. So, what we're going to do is scoop under there like that, trim it out. Grab any of those stragglers, trim those out. Right, and you know, do this for a lot of different materials. So we'll go to you know the next material. See how all these different materials react to thread tension. You know, if they work better under low tension or work better under high tension. It's it's a you know, all an experimentation process. So um, here we've got some uh, foxtail, or fox body fur, sorry. Um, so what we're gonna do is just grab some. We've got a little extra fluff on these sticking pretty good. Um, well, yeah, all we're gonna do is, you know, we'll take some nice light loose wraps and we'll take some heavy hard wraps and see it, you know, it doesn't really do much to it. So now we know. It doesn't push it around a whole lot. So let's go in. Um, let's try tying in some crystal flash. So we'll just kind of lay it on top and notice. Uh, I I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but I'm laying it right where it's going to intersect with the thread on the top. But it's going to push that crystal flash over to the side. That's you know, in, the, in this case up or facing towards me. So what we're seeing is that the thread tension can cause torque and it can push and pull materials 
you know, in different ways. So um, I notice it a lot with these sort of uh, you know, fibered materials, uh, crystal flash, wire, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, so what we're watching for is how that thread torque, you know, the force that the thread's imparting on the materials is causing those materials to react. So if you can learn that, you can see how much that affects it, you know, where it affects it, and you know, so on and so forth. You can use that to your advantage. So now I know next time I want to tie in that crystal flash, if I want it on my side, I have to tie it in on top. If I want it on top, I have to tie it in on the side away from me. If I want it on the side away from me, I have to tie it in, you know, so on and so forth. Or what you can do is adjust the amount of torque that you're implying by adjusting tension. So now, um, let's go ahead and undo that. So now, I'm going to lay this on top, just where it's going to intersect. And then I'm going to take a really loose wrap. And see, now it's stayed on top. Because I'm imparting less torque onto the material. So, I mean, that's the basics of, you know, thread tension and thread torque. And that's, like I said, it's every material can be different. Um, like I said, I, I see a lot more, a lot of the, you know, torquing effect. A lot more with these uh, stranded or fibered materials, um, crystal flash, you know, any kind of flash, uh, wires, uh, tinsels, stuff like that. Um, not so much with the furs or um, anything like that. You do, you do get a little bit of it with the uh, actual hair, but um, as you probably saw me do, if you hold on to the end of that while you're tying it in, you can kind of correct for everything and it'll work out better. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's basics of thread torque. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do some dubbing. I'll show you guys how to do some dubbing with that uh, dubbing wax. Um, wherever I put it. Well, anyways, um, with most dubbings, I do not bother with uh, waxing the thread. But if I am doing a more coarse uh, dubbing, like uh, this ice dub or um, you know natural dubbings like uh, hair's mask, like the homemade hair's mask or stuff like that, um, especially with uh, my one of my new favorites is not really new favorite anymore, but um, squirrel dubbing. It's hands down one of my favorite natural dubbings right now. Is a little bit of uh, wax will go a long ways. So there it is. So all you do is when you get to the part that you want to dub, and all you do is drag it through a couple times, and I run my finger over it to get off the excess, and then that'll help add some grip to your thread. I'll grip onto this dubbing a little bit easier. And um, you know, why the reason I don't do it on all dubbings is that some of them don't need it. The you know a lot of the synthetic dubbings or the finer you know uh, natural dubbings. If you wax the thread, you're going to be trapping a lot of those dubbing fibers onto the thread, whereas you want them to you know not be trapped. You want the fly to look buggy. You know with um, these coarser fibers, it's already you know buggy enough, so you don't really need that extra little bit. So yeah, you just rub a little bit on to your thread and then you, know, you got a little dubbing. And then let's go ahead and try it with uh, some smooth scroll dubbing. And yeah, same thing, no matter what, it's just rub it a couple times on there, rub off the excess. And put some on. You know, this is different than um, what I would do with uh, touch dubbing. We'll do touch dubbing after this. Because, you know, I want these fibers stuck on. And, um, you know, it's it's not like a dubbing collar or anything like that. It's, you know, it's making up the body of the fly, so I don't want to chance any of that coming off. 
but um, if I am doing a touchdown. All I do is I grab this wax stuff. Get out of there. Oh, that's gonna be a little bit cold in this stuff. It seizes up pretty good. Um, again, I'll have to worry about that later. Look at the other stuff. This stuff works pretty good. It's not quite as well in my opinion, but it does work. So, same thing. We're gonna rub that on rub off the excess and by the excess I just mean like the big clumps you know we're not rubbing this to get the stickiness off because that's what we want but yeah so touch dubbing is you know I'm just rubbing this on to point where it sticks on and see this is not the best results you know you really want something really good and tacky but Yeah, so we're just rubbing that wax on you, get the clumps off, and we'll also try a little bit more of a normal dubbing rather than just a select. So the, yeah, this is just some uh, hair's ear, just some store-bought hair's ear, and see how well that sticks. A lot better than the uh, other wax. But, um, yeah, so we're basically, we're just touching this to the thread. And I'll kind of build up a coat of the, uh, dubbing on there. Um, ball is all up. And I'm, I'm by no means a master of touch dubbing either. Um, I don't claim to be. It's not something that I do very often. Just for the sake of the video, we'll just spend some on there. All right. So now, got that on there. All right. Now that we're at the last little bit, um, let's see what else we can do. Let's uh, spin on some apple. Stuff. And this is a little Metscape that I keep around for streamers and stuff. Um, we'll go ahead and steal that guy. And again, you know, as you're doing this, I mean, you don't have to do this along with me, but as you're experimenting, you know, every material that you tie in, see how it reacts, see what you can do to either um, mitigate or you know, learn that um, that way, that torque that it imparts, the way that it acts when you're, when you're tying in the materials. So, just do everything, everything's on observation when you're tying. Um, even now, you know, I'm still learning things. So these are those hackle pliers that we were looking at. And all you're going to do is clip it on the end and wrap it around. And see how nice that keeps everything in line. And you just pull back the fibers as you go. Keep everything from getting trapped underneath everything. And I'm never having to worry about you know, getting things untangled or untwisted or anything like that. It's just nice and easy. And come up to the 
front, cross everything, and pull everything back and out of the way. And that's the biggest key that I can tell you guys about uh, forming a head on a fly or you know, finishing up a fly is just grab your fingers, make the triangle. See how there's a you know there's going to be a little tiny triangle gap in there, and use that to pull back all the fibers and everything that's in front of the eye. Pull it back, form a little head, and then and this we can just break off like that. And then now we're going to come up to the whip finish. And so we've got our whip finish tool here. And these can be kind of confusing to learn. Um, it took me a while. I just stuck with half hitches before I took the time to learn this. But they're easy, simple, quick. Um, what you do is you take this front hook, hook it onto the thread, pull it, your thread back here, and around in this notch back here and back past the fly and that's you can do that all with um, without moving your bobbin hand much anyways and what you're doing is you're just making a figure four um, I don't know if you guys can see that let's let's make sure that you guys can see let's kind of zoom in a little bit all right so I'm just making a figure four with my thread like that but you know, up closer to the eye a little bit. And what you're doing is this leg right here is crossing over this leg, the loose end. So that's gonna cross over it, cross over it, cross over it. And I mean, really you can do, let's get the focus right, you can do it as many times around as you want, but three or four is generally a good number. And all you do is, focus here as you push that notch out I'll do it one more time for you guys keep focus there we go so all we do is we're going to push it into that front hook back in the notch figure four one two three I come up and we're going to slide this notch end back forward till it pops out of the thread and we just got it on the front hook and we're going to pull with our bobbin hand down until that front hook meets the head and then slide it out and give it a nice tug and it's going to tighten up so I mean, that's how you whip finish that's probably one of the more complicated parts of um, working with tools I guess um, yeah it's a uh, not that hard, uh, you know, tying flies, it's, I mean, look at this cool guy that we got here, you know, with the little fancy butt end and the red and the ice dub and the body and all that, it's pretty neat, right? Huh? So, yeah, it's just to take your time and practice with your tools and, you know, do that, even, you know, I know a lot of you guys are probably excited to get started and tying things that can actually so, um, I just switched up cameras, my other one, uh, decided to corrupt a bunch of data while I was filming, but, um, what I was trying to say is that, you know, everything's, a uh, experimentation while you're, uh, tying flies, and, you know, every new material has different properties that you have to adapt for, and you just have to experiment with it and observe what, what's going on, and, you know, like a lot of it's with, uh, you know, thread tension, and, um, you know, how is that material going to act? How much strength does that material have? You know, um, can I pull on it as hard as I want and it won't break and I can use that as a strong point in my fly or is it um, fairly weak, like, you know, a uh, hackle stem or something like that where if I tug on it a little bit too hard, it's going to fall out and or uh, break and I'm going to have to, you know, adapt for that. Am I going to have to um, put in... Uh, wire reinforcing wrap or you know something along those lines and you know you just have to take your time like all things in uh, fishing you have to be patient and take the time to learn this skill and um, you know I know a lot of you guys like I was saying um, 
a lot of you guys are excited to get started tying and tie something that'll actually actually catch fish. But um, just you know, take the time tie some goofy flies like this guy, and uh, you know, learn your materials, and it'll end up in the long run making better quality flies and uh, take some of the stress out of you know tying the really small stuff when you know how that material is going to react every time that you pull on it with thread or um, every time that you wrap it and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's, there's a learning curve with everything, with new patterns, new materials, new hooks even. You know, it's take the time, be patient, and learn what you can from observation. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.